welcome to a discussion of the most anthologized poem in English literature. The poem is titled The Tiger and is written by the romantic poet William Blake. Blake was a poet and painter who was born in Soho in London in 1757. Although he was not so recognized during his time, he is now counted as one of the prominent romantic poets to have had a seminal effect in this genre of romantic poetry. As well as painting, Blake also made books of his poems which he illustrated. He wrote Songs of Innocence, published in 1779, and Songs of Experience, published in 1794. Before we begin the poem, let us take note of the fearsome and majestic beauty of this wild animal. In the title, tiger is spelt not with an I, but with a Y, because Blake wanted to use archaic or old English. This was possibly for the sake of artistic effect and to add an exotic quality to this fearsome creation. In his collection, Songs of Innocence, Blake has written a poem about the gentle lamb. The lamb represents innocence. In this poem, which is from the collection Songs of Experience, Blake has provided a contrasting image about the raw fearsomeness of the tiger, which is juxtaposed with the gentleness of the meek lamb. The tiger represents experience, while the lamb represents innocence. He makes a contrast between the creation of a raw, wild, predatory animal like the tiger and the sweet and innocent lamb that never hurts anyone and has innocent faith in a benevolent and kind universe that will never hurt him. Take a look at the ferocious strength of the tiger and catch a glimpse of its predatory nature in its eyes. And now, take a look at the gentleness of a small lamb that neither would hurt anyone nor expect any threat to its existence. Now, let's take a look at some more features of the poem. The I, or poet, addresses the tiger. The poet looks at the tiger and wonders at its terrifying primal nature and at the same time he marvels at the process that led to its creation. The main idea is creation and the creator. The poet has described the raw beauty and the tensile strength of this beast and to him it is a reflection of the strength of the creator. Romantic imagery has been used in the description of the awesome and aesthetic beauty and primal force of the tiger. Written in 1794, it is a sister poem to the poem The Lamb from Songs of Innocence, written in 1779. The main theme of the poem is to present a sense of wonder or marvel at the contrast of the tiger's ferocity and fire with the gentleness of the lamb. The contrast serves to make us understand the various extremes that exist in nature, such as heaven and hell, gentle and ferocious, and to give us an understanding of why creatures are the way they are. It contains many questions, primarily, why God created such evil and ferocious creatures when he also created the mild lamb? The tiger is seen as a symbol of evil or Satan and the lamb is a symbol of the good or God. The poem is more about the mystery of the creator than the creature or the tiger. Now let us take a look at the poem. Tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In the very first line, the poet addresses a tiger and refers to its bright flashes of colour in the dark night-time forest. The speaker asks which immortal being could possibly have created the tiger's fearsome beauty. The archaic or old spelling of tiger gives a romantic remoteness to the creature adding sublimity to it. By use of burning and bright, 
the poet creates images of bright, fiery fur of the tiger's stripes flashing through the darkness of the night. Immortal here refers to God. Symmetry here refers to its aesthetic beauty. The beauty of the tiger is also fearful as the tiger has been designed to kill and inflict pain. There is use of alliteration in burning bright and frame thy fearful. Now we come to the second stanza of the poem. In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? In these lines, the speaker wonders at the birthplace or the origin of the tiger. He wonders in which far of deaths or skies were the tiger's fiery eyes made. The deeps or the depths are a symbol of hell while the skies are a symbol of heaven. So basically, the poet is asking whether the tiger was created in heaven or in hell. The poet has used the metaphor of a fire to bring out the burning intensity of the tiger's eyes. He wonders at the aspirations of the creator and also if he had wings and also whose hand would be daring enough to create the magnificent beast, the tiger. The eyes of the tiger are burning with fire. Here he has used a metaphor, the eyes are burning with fire. He uses the word, words dare, wings and aspire to show the intentions or the aspirations of the creator. The deeps are a symbol of hell while the skies are a symbol of heaven. The poet wonders how could the creator get so close to the blazing fire? How could God seize or grasp the fire? Stanza 3 and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dreadful hand and what dread feet? In the third stanza, the speaker imagines the strength and craftsmanship required to create the tiger. He is wondering who could be strong enough to build the tiger's muscular body and the horrifying beautiful creature's heart. When this dreadful being's heart had begun to beat, how difficult it must have been to stand before it without fear and to use hands to create those dreadful hands and feet. The wonder is not only at the creature, but at the force of the creator. Stanza 4 What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain, what the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors grasp. In the fourth stanza, we have a metaphor of a blacksmith forging something out of iron. He uses a hammer, a chain, a furnace and an anvil, all the tools that a blacksmith might require. All the objects required to make the tiger would have to be very mighty to create the dreadful creature's brain and the rest of it. Again, the poet wonders at how the creator could create such a destructive mind when he has also created the gentle and sweet lamp. Stanza 5 When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamp make thee? In the fifth stanza, the rebel angels and the followers of Satan were so amazed to see this new creation of God, that is the tiger, that they threw down their spears as an acceptance of their defeat and wept because the tiger, which is merciless, strong, as well as ferocious, had been created by God. In another rhetorical question, the poet wonders if God was pleased to see his handiwork as it implied that he had created a cosmic force that would ensure his victory over the rebel angels and Satan. Again, the poet is, expresses a sense of wonder that the same creator who created the lamb had made this creature. Stanza 6 Tiger, tiger, burning bright, 
in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? The last stanza is a refrain. It is identical to the first, except that the could in the first stanza is replaced by the dare in the last line here. The first stanza speaks of an aspiration and the last of the sheer might of the creative act. With that, we come to an end of the explanation of the poem. Let's take a look at the important points of the poem. The poem makes use of many rhetorical questions addressed to the tiger to express the sense of marvel at the creator's creations. The tiger and the lamb both represent different aspects of the divine existence. The lamb is the gentle submissive aspect of nature that bows down to the will of nature, while the tiger is a defiant and frightening aspect of nature. The poet is trying to reconcile himself to the contradictory aspects of nature and God. The image of fire is recurrently presented to create a dangerous environment which is at the same time majestic in its awesome beauty. The poem presents industrial tools such as hammer, chains, anvil and furnace. These are representative of the industrial revolution during Blake's time. It makes use of alliteration, examples of which are found in Burning Bright, Frame Thy Fearful, Distant Deeps, What Wings, Began to Beat, Smile to See, etc. The poem has six quatrains of two rhyming couplets each. Rhyme scheme is AABB and the meter is a combination of iambic pentameter and trochaic. The regular rhythmic quality suggests the hammering of a smith. With this, we come to an end of the discussion. I hope you like the lecture. Thank you very much.